Hey, 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 what's up, healthpreneurs? It's that time again, 1 p.m. Eastern, Wednesday afternoon. You know what that means. It's HPTV, Healthpreneur TV. Welcome. Uriel came here, and I'm just going to open up the Facebook feed to make sure that I know what I'm doing here and make sure we're connecting and you can hear me. That's, uh, that's important, right? So welcome to today's show. Welcome to the studio, this is where I do most of my recording. Uh, some of the videos, the podcasts, interviews, all that good stuff happens in here. And uh, I'm super pumped to be with you today because we're gonna be talking about something rather controversial, uh, especially in this, this uh, I think, this space of entrepreneurship, which is grind, hustle, hard work. And uh, specifically, I wanna talk to you, the health printer, the health or fitness professional, the health coach, the naturopath, the doctor, the dietitian, uh, the health crusader, who wants to really get your impact out there, build an online platform, or really a thriving business that helps a lot of people. Uh, I wanna talk about this because I think there's, there's two different camps when it comes to this. And I think that this topic is one that creates a lot of problems in people's businesses and their personal lives that eventually leads them to detest what they're doing. And so let me give you a couple examples from the world of health and fitness before we jump into business and how this applies specifically to your business. So I don't, I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I'm assuming most of us health and fitness professionals don't tell our clients, hey, uh, you should be working out seven days a week, three hours at a time, and basically when you leave the gym, you should, be, you should barely be able to walk, right? You should be crushing yourself in the gym and to the point where you're essentially just lying down as if you just completed the CrossFit Games. So that's one metaphor that I think is really important to think about because if we are telling, now again, correct me if I'm wrong, if you're, if you're telling your clients to do that, then I would question your methods maybe a little bit, but unless, you know, if it's working and, and your clients are dying, that's, that's one thing. But it's interesting when you look at, for instance, CrossFit, CrossFit is, to my knowledge, not even allowed to be performed by U.S. soldiers because of the injury rates and overtraining that it causes and creates. And, you know, I remember I had a friend who played basketball at a high level in Canada. And, at, you know, when he had finished playing uh, in uh, his college, his university, he went into CrossFit and started doing it five days a week. Now, I have no problem with CrossFit. I think it's an amazing movement for really getting people to an incredible level of fitness. But for the average person who has no idea how to do a snatch, right, or a deadlift, and having them do those to failure with a standard weight is outright dangerous. And especially when you're getting people to do things beyond what they're capable of doing, from a training perspective, it causes a lot of damage. Now, the same thing happens in business. When you are starting off in business, uh, again, there's different seasons of life. There's different seasons in business. And there are times to work hard. There are times not to work as hard. But I think there's a lot of, you know, we live in a culture that values hard work. And it goes back to the whole idea of the American dream, you know, way back in the, whatever it was, turn of the century or back in the day where all the immigrants came over and they got rewarded for working hard, right? They would sacrifice their life pretty much to work hard so that their family, their younger ones could have a better future. And that's awesome, right? Like you could literally come over with nothing and with hard work, you could make something of yourself and you know provide for your family for you know into the into the future and i think that's awesome i think though in today's day and age we're no longer in the working with our hands economy of, of the blue collar economy is is really disappearing to a large degree and as you know we're now in the information and technology age which values above and beyond i mean which values above all else ideas we are now, what I'm going to call this the idea economy because there's, you know, we can debate about this, you know, for all time's sake is the difference between ideas and execution. And I believe that execution is a commodity. Like you can find people to pretty much do anything you want to do. Build a website, design something, um, contact people, outreach, whatever it is you want to do. You can find somebody or a service or an app to do that for you. So what does that leave you, the entrepreneur, the leader, the visionary, to really spend most of your time on is idea generation. And that's why I continue saying that thinking is your most valuable activity. 
And one of the things that I do for our health printer community is I help you think more effectively by providing frameworks and thinking tools so that you're not spending a week thinking about something. You have a worksheet, a one page document, for instance, that allows you to take your thinking and put it down on paper to give you more clarity and a proven kind of a, a more visual path of, you know, from where you are to where you want to go. So we are now in the day, day and age of working smarter, not harder unless you want to burn yourself out, unless you want to build a business that you no longer enjoy being a part of, I would strongly suggest that you look at developing ways to work smarter instead of harder. So does this make sense for you guys? I hope it does. Um, again, if you're just joining me, I've kind of just rambled on here. What's up, Philip? John Rowley, what's going on, brother? Haven't seen you in forever. How's life? Dude, what's going on? Let me know. So, um, yeah, um, just kind of lost my train of thought here. Here's, okay, so here's something else I want you to think about. And then we'll talk about some specific strategies to work a little bit smarter. Um, again, I don't know if you're, I'm not religious, I'm a little more spiritual. I believe that there's kind of universal powers that um, that kind of bring us what we want, uh, you know, bring us what we want and focus on. I'm, I'm a believer, believer of the law of attraction and it's kind of like the law of gravity. It doesn't really matter if you believe in, in it or not, it still works. If you don't have the results that you want in your life, well, you have the results that you've been focusing on, okay, or the things that you've been focusing on. So it's up to you to change that in your belief system, your ment in, your, in your, your kind of mental focus, in your language, in your vibration. So here's something to think about. If you are working, okay, think about this. The harder you work, what is that telling? What's the, the vibration that that's putting out into the universe? Is that a vibration or a frequency of expectance? Or is that projecting the message that I don't have faith that what I want will come to me, therefore I have to force the issue and work really hard to make something happen? I want you to think about that for a second because I think it's really interesting. Think about, you know, think about another analogy. Let's look at the nature, right? Nature has so many amazing analogies and metaphors that transfer over to business beautifully. What happens when we look at growing a plant, right? Plants, well, I'm not going to go into specific species, but let's just take plant as a plant. What does a plant need to grow? Well, it needs sun, it needs oxygen or carbon dioxide specifically. Um, it needs some water and it needs some specific nutrients in the soil, right? Those are the ingredients that the plant uses to, you know, go through its thing and through photosynthesis, it creates carbohydrates, which we eventually eat. Now, what happens if you plant a seed as a farmer, let's say, or just, a, you know, a, a hobbyist gardener and you plant a seed for a tomato plant? and you plant that seed and you're watching it every single day and you're getting impatient and you're like, okay, let's put some more water on this seed. Let's emit some more sunlight on here. Let's overfeed with minerals and other nutrients for the soil. What's gonna happen there? Are you going to accelerate the seed's ability to grow? No, the seed has its kind of built-in time frame to become a tomato plant. And just like in business, you can force the issue on certain things. Yes, you can make the calls, you can do the outreach, you can make certain, you can take the action to do the work that you are in control of. But once it's off your plate, you just have to accept the process and understand that it's gonna take time. Farmers understand this, they plant the seeds, they mow the fields, they do what they have to do, and then they understand that there's a process, there's a, a length of time where things need to brew and germinate and come to fruition before they can reap the rewards of what they've planted. And I find a lot of times in our society, we want immediate gratification. We want the event, we don't want the process. And it's the process that makes us the most fulfilled and it's really where we grow the most, right? Earning a million dollars is great for earning a million dollars, but what's more great is who you become in the process. And, you know, one of the things that I'm going to teach my kids is, you know, you should absolutely have the goal of becoming a multimillionaire, not for the toys and all the nonsense, but because of who you have to become in the process. And so I'm not discounting the importance of hard work. There is a time and place to put in the effort to take action. 
I'm not saying you should sit in a chair and meditate and expect stuff to come to you. That's not going to happen. But what you need to understand is that you have to do your part. You have to do your part of the work and then let it go. Just let it go and allow the process of whatever needs to happen for it to do its thing. Okay? The harder you try, the more you are putting out a vibration that you don't believe what you want will come into your life. Okay? So remember that. Um, does that make sense? Does, do you guys have any questions about this or thoughts? Let me know in the comments here. Because uh, I, I think this is something that's really, really valuable. And I, and I believe that I, I've seen a lot of people really grind themselves into the ground building their business. And it's something that I did for the first couple of years in my business. You know, I, I tried all sorts of things, doing the wrong things, spending so much time and focus on, you know, tiny pebbles instead of big rocks. And I was working super hard in terms of time and energy because I was doing the wrong things. If you do the right things, you don't have to do as much. So figure out what those important levers are in your business. Spend your time on those and literally everything else goes to somebody else or other people. We talked about this in the last episode with the love-hate exercise, right? Focus on what you love doing, focus on what you're great at and delegate, outsource everything else. So that leads us into this whole discussion of like, well, how do we work smarter instead of harder? Well, part of it is about identifying the important levers in your business, right? So as, as an online entrepreneur, one of the most important things you need to master is the ability to communicate and articulate your point of view in a way that influences people to a greater future. And whether that's in video, audio, or writing, that's a very important skill that you have to learn, develop, and eventually master. And you know, it doesn't matter if you're doing product launches or Facebook, you know, ad buying or you know, affiliate stuff. You have to harness the ability to influence other people. And that's what a leader does, is a leader is able to influence others, ideally in a direction that's for their greater good. And when you're able to identify what those activities are, you spend your time on those. And what ends up happening is that all the other stuff that you think you should be doing, all the nitty gritty things that don't really make a big difference, you can move those onto somebody else's plate. And as a result, you're not working as hard anymore. You're working more intelligently. Again, it comes back to self-awareness and understanding that you have a gift and you want to use that unique difference to make a difference. So in, um, for me, my gift, I believe, well, part of my gift is kind of articulating whatever it is uh, through speaking. So video, speaking on stage, that's what I love to do. I love teaching in this format because I'm able to express myself most freely in, compa in comparison to writing stuff down. So if I, again, like when I got back from my two-month sabbatical, I realized that in my health business, which is more or less systemized, I don't really need to do that much. The only thing I want to do and cannot delegate is video. And that's fine because I love doing that. So my big levers are strategic thinking. So creating the vision, how are we going to achieve that vision? Video. And that's pretty much it, right? And then for me, selling is teaching. So when I'm teaching, I'm selling. There's really no difference to me. If I'm asking somebody to buy something, it's never going to be without a, a strong element of teaching. So that's why I've developed this whole method called teach to sell because teaching is selling. You're teaching people in a way where they naturally are like, okay, well, what's the next step? How do I do business with you? How do I get this solution? And that's for me, a very natural way of communication. So that's all I do in my business. So I'm curious in your business in what you do, if you know this, just let me know in the comments, like what is your big lever what's the one thing that you can do that you do that nobody else can do that if you only did that it would move your business in the right direction let me know in the comments if you if you wouldn't mind sharing that i'm just curious to know what that is for some people that might be writing that might be uh, copywriting writing sales copy that might be you know focusing on research that might be the the creation of content whatever it might be for you the key is to know what that is and identify that. 
so that you can spend more time on that, less time on the other stuff. And again, if this makes sense to you guys, um, be sure to join us at healthpreneurgroup.com, uh, the fastest growing online community for health and fitness professionals looking to grow their online business. Because the whole idea here is that there is a lot of overwhelm and distraction with building an online business, as you can imagine, just being on, on Facebook here. You're probably seeing what your friends are up to. There's probably ads popping up. You can click on a number of different links and buttons that there's a lot of distraction, right? Maybe you're seeing something pop up for the newest widget that you should download and use or the newest app on your iPhone that's gonna help your productivity. Whatever it is, um, these are all distractions and when you pile all this stuff up, it ends up becoming just a lot of stuff that you're carrying. It's like you're, it's like you're hiking a mountain with a thousand things in your knapsack. And if you can imagine, just kind of feel and visualize that, do you think you're gonna make it up that mountain effortlessly well as, as effortlessly as, as you possibly can climbing a mountain or is it going to be more challenging right the more stuff you're carrying with you the more to do's the more things i need to do or i should do right these all pile up and they wear you down and it's not about working harder through it it's about working smarter through it if you get your car stuck in the mud are you going to rev the gas pedal and try to really like redline it Right? Rev up those RPMs. The faster, the harder you press down that gas pedal, the more the, ch the, more the, likely, the better the likelihood your car is going to get out of the mud. Probably not, right? Especially if you're using the wrong business model or let's say your car is rear wheel drive, which is almost impossible to get out of the mud or let's say a couple feet of snow. You can push as hard as you want, but if you're using the wrong vehicle, then you're not going to get where you want to get to, in this case, out of the snow or out of the mud. So with your business, identify what it is you love to do, what it is you're best at doing, and then try to create a business system or a business model around that. So I've made a lot, I'll give you an example. I made a lot of mistakes in my business when I first started, and we continue to make a lot of mistakes. And that's part of why I'm able to teach a lot of this stuff is that we take a lot of action and we learn from that. Some of it's good, some of it's bad, and we move on. So when I first started my business, I spent a lot of time doing, just, I don't even know what I was doing, to be very honest with you. It was just a lot of wasted time. The one thing I did well was YouTube, right? And I'm, and I'm not talking strategically. I'm just talking, but I had ideas. Again, this is without any market research or anything. I'm just like, I'm like verbal diarrhea onto video. And, you know, several years later, I've got like 900 videos on YouTube. And... I didn't know it at the time, but that was the most natural thing for me to do. And it kind of became the, uh, the, the, the center of our solar system, if you will, where a lot of my time and energy went into producing video. And it just so happened that a lot of our best customers came from YouTube because they saw one, 10, 100 of my videos. And by that point, they had been drinking the Yuri Kool-Aid. They're like, I like this guy or I don't like this guy, in which case that's fine. And by the time they got to the website, they were much more likely to want to deepen the relationship with me. And that's something, that, you know, again, it took me a long time to recognize that, hey, maybe I should be doing more video or a little bit more, um, more video in a strategic way as opposed to just, you know, putting stuff out there randomly. So that is, um, that's the big thing. So Nicole, what's up, Nicole? So you're saying your big thing is coaching, right? Which is great. Excuse me while I just have a little wipe of the nose there. So, if your skill is coaching one-on-one -on -one or in group settings, then that's what you want to be focusing on. And initially, here's the reality. The, the, where the hard work and grind and hustle comes in is really when you're starting out in business. You have two business models. You have the business model of you bootstrapping it, which is pretty much what most of us do, which is amazing because when you don't have the money, it forces innovation and creativity, and that's massively important. And the second thing is that uh, the kind of opposite side of that is when you have a, like massive amounts of resources, i.e. like a Silicon Valley company, which has venture capital funding. So now you can, from day one, if you have, you know, five, $10 million, you can go out and hire programmers, designers, salespeople, marketing experts to do all this stuff for you. 
right? So you've got two completely different types of businesses. I believe that a venture-backed business can become lazy and complacent and wasteful. I love the fact that we can bootstrap business and focus on, I've got $200, what am I gonna do with that 200 bucks, right? So initially, unless you're rolling in the dough, you're gonna be doing most of the stuff yourself. And that's what you have to do. That's just, you gotta learn the marketing, you gotta learn the copywriting skills, you gotta learn like the basics, right? Once you hit a point where you're starting to make a little bit more money, that's where you wanna start offloading some of those things. So for instance, Nicole, in your situation, you can focus on more of the coaching, right? Um, but initially, you know, we gotta really do the stuff ourselves. And that's where the hard work and grind comes in, is in those initial stages. But as you climb the pyramid of business development, business growth, what ends up happening is that oftentimes the entrepreneur, the CEO, reverts back to what they initially were doing, which is the technical, I'm gonna show you how to get in shape or the content development or the coaching. Because as a health and fitness expert, that is your special sauce. See, what I realized on my two month sabbatical is that, and I think I mentioned this last week, is that the organization's weakness is the leader's strength. So my strength, I, you know, what, I guess one of my top strengths is marketing and strategy. And I was like, well, if I take two months off, who's gonna be doing the email writing, right? Who's gonna be setting up the funnels? Who's gonna be working on this marketing calendar? And that was always something that kind of held me back from delegating that because I thought that I was the only person who could do that. Lo and behold, guess what? Somebody else can do it just as well. So Tom on our team was able to take that on and he still does it now, even though I'm back. And it's great because I don't have to focus on that stuff anymore. What I can focus on is the delivering of value, which also marketing. So what we're doing here, what I'm doing here is marketing. Marketing is education. Selling is teaching. It's all the same stuff, right? But now I'm able to focus on the thinking of how do I make my content unique in a way that's very different from everyone else. And that's what you bring to the marketplace, right? We are in a very competitive marketplace. There's no shortage of personal trainers. There's no shortage of dietitians. There's no shortage of health and fitness professionals wanting to help people improve their health. And that's amazing because collectively we're able to help millions of people. The dilemma is that when somebody lands on your website and you help them lose weight, the first thing they're gonna ask is, well, how do you differ from the next person, from the next person, from the other 100 people that are doing the same thing. And that's where messaging comes in. That's where value proposition comes in. That's where the way you build your content in terms of frameworks and the way you teach it is massively important. And this is something I learned um, and, and really hammered home when I was working with Dan Sullivan and Strategic Coach because everything he does, everything they do has a name to it. It has a, a unique method, a proprietary system that is unique to them. And that's what you have as well. You have a unique way of delivering what it is you do. And I think, Nicole, I don't know if we talked about this at the workshop or if it was with Jennifer that I was talking about this, but the way you deliver your thing, your result, is... There's a process, right? There's a, there's a success path. First you do this, then you do that, then you do that. All you have to do is step back and just document that and give it a name, right? And what that does is automatically it sets your thing outside of what everyone else knows. So for instance, this is also known as mechanism. Uh, so whenever you're in a marketplace where there's a lot of competition, what you have to really develop is a mechanism or a unique method that is unique to you or your product, right? So you see like a lot of uh, fitness products that come out with like unique methods, for instance, our all day fat burning workouts, the unique method there is the slow fast method or the fast slow method, I can't even remember. And that's a unique method of using eccentric and concentric training in a way that's very specific to our workouts, but we've given it a name and we've broken down that process. So no other workout system in the world uses that same mechanism. That's why it's different than everything else. 
So even though your thing is relatively similar, perhaps, in terms of the outcome it's going to give somebody, you want to identify what that uniqueness is, what that mechanism is, break it down, give it a name, and highlight that. That's how you start to stand out in this crowded marketplace. Okay. Now, again, I, again we can go into detail and in depth on this, all this stuff. And that's why I do these workshops um, and provide these frameworks so we can go in depth on that type of stuff, right? So I'm just kind of skimming the surface here, but I want to give you some, some stuff to think about because it's massively important, um, especially in a competitive crowded marketplace. Now, I'm not saying that there's not a, not a lot of room for, for everyone to succeed because there is. There's plenty of room for everyone to, to do really well and succeed. And I, I'm, the, I'm the example of what not to do. Like my business is very general. Like I'm going after the general public. Like I haven't got niche or dar- narrow and I've had to use messaging and positioning to really, you know, carve out a, a segment of that, uh, of that audience just based on, yes, I agree with this or, or no, I don't agree with what he's talking about. So anyways, um, yeah, be first. If you can't be first, be different. Yeah, perfect. Nicely said, Philip. Um, yeah, verbal diarrhea. That's that's all is good. Yeah, that's pretty much what I what I do. I, I mean, I, I consider myself a, a verbal diarrhea or sometimes because I'll just go off on tangents and talk a lot. Yeah, Erica. So working harder feeds the ego and makes people feel more valuable. Being uh, being busy for the sake of being busy. Exactly right. So when you enter a conversation with somebody, how's work? You busy, right? Why is that even the, why is that even a question? Well, how's work? You you know, you're not doing anything? How about that? You sitting around like just thinking or off playing with your kids or, or doing other things you love? That should be maybe a more valuable question than hey, things are busy. So yeah. Um so anyways, I hope that adds some value to you guys. Um yeah, so once again, thanks for joining me. I know this has been an interesting conversation. Let me know if you're watching the replay on this, let me know in the comments what you believe. Uh, to be true when it comes to working smarter versus harder. Do you agree with me? Do you think I'm full of BS? And yeah, that'd be awesome. Let me know in the comments. Again, the replay for this will be in the Healthpreneur group. If you're not in there, join us, healthpreneurgroup.com. And I'll also be posting this up on the YouTube by tomorrow. And I want to thank you guys once again for taking the time out of your midday or in the morning, depending on where you are. And uh, remember, every Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 9 a.m. Sorry, that's 10 a.m. Pacific three hours behind. Uh, We'll be doing these HPTV live episodes. They're a lot of fun. I'm enjoying them. Hope you are as well. And just to give you guys uh, a little sneak peek of what's coming next week. Oh, next week, marketing makeover. Oh my God, I almost forgot. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take one lucky person. I'm going to dive deep into one of their things and we're going to dissect it. So if you want to be that person, make sure you're in the Healthpreneur group and let me know in the comments in the feed there because I need to pick somebody before next week to go through their, their business and kind of work on some stuff with them. So we're going to highlight that in next week's episode, 1 p.m. Eastern, right here, same bad time, same bad channel. Thanks for joining me, guys, and I'll see you inside the Healthpreneur group. Go over there now. The link is somewhere on this thread, wherever. I hope you have an amazing day. Go out there, help some people, and, uh, and kick butt. Talk to you soon.